Hello everyone and welcome to Art on the Farm with me and Sage and Jan. Today we are going to be painting a cardinal with acrylic paint but use whatever paint that you have at home. If you have tempera then you can do this on paper. Watercolor you can do this on paper. Acrylic today we're going to be using acrylic and a canvas. So you're going to need a white canvas and you are going to need red, brown, gray, black, white, and blue. I would have all of those colors ready to go. You never know what you might need. Um, you're also going to want something for the uh, beak of the bird, so be thinking about that as well. You may want to go on and have um, yellow or orange your choice on that. So let's get started. So as we go, to do uh, the bird itself, we're going to be doing a cardinal today. And we're going to think about the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds says that if there is a tic-tac-toe grid running across my canvas, if there is a huge tic-tac-toe grid running across my canvas, then my best bet is to think about those lines particularly where they would intersect with each other. And that is going to be a place of great interest in my picture. So I'm going to do my best guess of where those lines would intersect. And with a nice flat brush, I'm going to make a circle. This is going to be the circle for my cardinal's head. I'm going to make a little bit of a bigger cardinal head here. And we're not get, remember to not get too excited with the size. Don't get too big with the size because it's going to grow out really nicely. In fact, I think I put this a little close to the edge for my liking. If I were you, I'd go just a little closer to the center. Okay. Now, we're going to go up. And I want you to think in your mind like a shark fin and come down to meet it and fill that in. Like an angled triangle. Think shark fin. Next, we're going to do an angled raindrop. The top of the raindrop is coming into the head. Remember, it's an angled raindrop, so it's not going straight down, it's curved curved raindrop. And once you have your curved raindrop, you're going to go on and just fill that in nicely. I like to follow those same curves. Now going to the back end, we're going to be making our tail. The tail is going to be coming off of the edge of this raindrop. It's going to pull out like a little fan and then pull right back up and right back in. Now that I have my boundaries, I can make nice straight lines, drawing the eye back into that bird. I can work on that. And then finally, we're going to go on and do our wing. When we go to do the wing, we want to make sure that everything else is as we want it. Because we're going to dirty our brush a little bit as we do our wing. So check the lines. Check the lines that are drawing the eye across the canvas. These lines should be going upward, leading into these, which are more curved leading into the head. Some nice angles going there. And once you feel like everything is as it should be, you're going to take your, your red brush and we're going to go on and dip into just a little bit of, of brown. Sorry, just a little bit of brown. Okay. 
Now I'm doing a reverse raindrop. So the tip will be down here. It's going to have its fullness up here and then go back down. Reverse raindrop. Pull that closer to you so you can see. At any point in time, at any point in time when you think you need a break, don't hesitate to pause the video and then come back and join me when you're ready. Okay. Now if there's any other place where you want to add shadowing and shading, you most certainly can. For now, I'm going to leave the rest of this uh, bird alone for a little bit. And I'm going to move into the branch itself. I'm not going to clean this brush, but I'm just going to grab me another small, flat, angled brush. And different people choose different things for this one. Um, you have a brown. It's out. You're welcome to use that. Most people do. I think that with that red, I'm going to give it a really strong contrast. I'm going to go black for my branch. So. Just about an amount of about two or three peas is all you really need. You'll be surprised with all that you don't need. Okay. You're going to very carefully, very gently, if you have a hair dryer around to prevent smearing, you might find it very helpful to take a break and dry your bird. That way you're not worried about causing yourself problems with smearing in between. If not, if you feel confident and ready to go, that's fine too. Now I'm going to go on and pull out. I'm going to make a nice Y from here. My intention with these strokes, once I get the base done, is to do a one and done. I really want these out here to have enough paint on my brush that I do a stroke one time and I call it done. If you notice that something is thicker than where it came from, that is going to draw negative attention. You look at a branch, you're not going to find something coming out unless it's a highly unusual tree. You're not going to find something coming out that is bigger or thicker than the branch it came from. So really be careful with yourself on that front. I'm just pulling, I'm thinking about whys. Another key to this step is making sure you know when to stop and saying to yourself, okay, that's good. Okay. Now I'm going to be getting the color choice. I'm going to go with orange. I think yellow would be a kind of a sharp contrast here. So I'm going to go with just a little dab of orange. And just a little dab is going to be all that you need. We're going to be doing his beak now. I'm going to grab myself a small, more like a, uh, almost a round. He's supposed to be a flat brush, but he's a lower quality brush. He's almost round. Just make sure it's small enough that you feel like you have good control. And you're going to come right out here. You're thinking triangle.
If even that orange seems a little sharp to you, feel free to take a little bit of the red and dab them in there. Ooh, just be careful not to do too much. That was a lot. That was a whole lot, Mia Sage. Be careful not to do too much. Gonna mix that in there. Strong. One thing it seems like I'm fighting with is because this is a lower quality brush, let's see if I can get it so that you can see here right there on the end. As I move my finger away. Yep. Right there on the end, there is a bit of hair that is longer than the rest. And that's not something that I noticed when I was just grabbing the brush. But it's something that I'm noticing as I'm working on the canvas. Because it's making my beak messy. And a lot of times when my student artists are working with something, they think that when something like that happens, they go, oh, I just can't do this. I knew I couldn't. I knew I wasn't good enough for this. That's not that at all. You got a faulty brush. So keep that in mind. This is a good time to dry it as well. Always make sure you kind of check your supply like I didn't. Learn from my mistakes there. This is a great time to dry it. If you're feeling bold with a steady hand, then at this point we're going to move forward. We're going to be dabbing with the black. We're going to go all the way in to where his eye will be. And this part will really make or break the personality of your bird. So don't be afraid to kind of go in on that head a bit. Explore with that angle. Notice I'm not doing big brush strokes. I'm just dabbing. There we go. I like that. And now in using my resources, I'm actually going to take the back end of the same brush I was using. The back end. I'm going to dab it into my white. I'm going to lay that color down right there. And I'm going to leave it alone. One of the hardest things to do in art. Leave it alone. Let it be. And give that a minute or two. And while I give that a minute or two to set, I'm going to start thinking about my sky. For this nice winter sky, I'm going to take a paper towel. I'm just going to fold back together. I'm going to use this like a sponge. I'm going to dab it into my gray. When you first dab it into the gray or whatever color you choose, it's going to come off really strong. So you're going to want to go to the edge of your um, plate. or old mail envelope or whatever it is that you're using and you're going to want to soften that color quite a bit and now I'm just going to go through here Ooh, yeah. I'm going to rough it up a bit and you decide some people may like it dabbed like that I really want to but note that if I start at this angle I want to keep it at this angle and once you've really established a way that you're going with it, stay with it. Be real careful as you're doing this. Make sure that if you're going to go over this that you've already painted, make sure that it is dry enough for you to do that. You may need to pause for a moment and get out a hair dryer. If you're super ambitious and you want to go through and completely color the whole thing by all means go through and do that but me I'm just gonna 
I know that my viewer doesn't need me to tell them everything that's going on in the background. So I'm going to do this as a suggestion. As a suggestion to my viewer. I'm now going to take a little bit of blue. I'll see now. That is an excellent example. I was careless, and now I've got this chunk. Now in my head, I'm going to say, hmm, now I, I was careless, and I've got this chunk. What am I going to do about it? Because somehow I need to make that look like it's on purpose. So I'm not going to cry and get all torn up and say, oh, my piece is ruined. I can't do it. I knew I couldn't do it. No, I've made a mistake. Now I need to figure out what I'm going to do about it. So I'm working with that blue now. Let's put it right over the gray. I'm going to add just a little bit more depth to that. You can get as close to your cardinal as you want to. Now, as I'm looking at my cardinal and I'm looking at my mistake here, I don't want it to look like he's pooping into the air. So I'm going to have to do something to make that look a little better. There we go. I'm going to take my brush. This is the same one that I used for that, same one that I used to dot the eye. I'm going to get a little more black. I'm going to say to myself, okay, we can do this. We can work on this. I'm going to pull from down here. Wasn't what I intended, but that's okay. Fill that in right there. And we're going to make that look as though it were on purpose. Because if you do any artwork, you are going to fall into some mistakes. That's just part of it. And the final product will be a direct result of how you handle your mistakes. And I think we're going to be just fine. All right. Lastly, I'm going to take that same end again. It's just been cleared off. I'm going to dip it into the black this time. And I'm going to put that right inside of the white and give him the center of his eye. All right. From there, you can add any other details that you desire. Thank you so much for coming to create with me today. Thank you so much for coming to work with us today. This has been Art on the Farm with me, Sage and Jan, brought to you by the Monroe Area Council for the Arts. Thank you so much for your time, and we'll see you next time.